One of the most fundamental skills that you can learn as an editor is being able to track in DaVinci Resolve. And there are many different ways. And if you want to learn all of those different ways, you've come to the right place. In this video, I'm going to cover off some of the best well-known tracking techniques in DaVinci Resolve, from the color tab to the fusion tab. My name's Dan, you're watching DaVinci, and let's get tracking. Okay, so with that all out of the way, let's jump into DaVinci Resolve. And in the description, I'll leave the timestamps and on the little, you know, bar. I'm just a helpful guy. So the first tracking feature is in the Fusion tab. So find your relevant clip in the edit page, drag it into the timeline, and let's jump into the Fusion tab. So the first technique is the Planar Tracker. This is my favorite tracker that I'm going to be teaching you. And so basically all you want to do when you're in the Fusion page is control space and search Planar Tracker like so, and just make sure it's inside your Fusion tree. This is what a Fusion tree is, basically. Basically, you've got your media in, which is the actual clip, and then you've got the media out, which is just the output of your shot. So we want to click on the planar tracker and just make sure it's inside the fusion tree. And the output of your media that you want to track is connected to the yellow triangle of the input of the tracker. So, and then obviously connected to the output. Over in the top right corner, you'll see something called the inspector tab. If you don't, it's just this little button here. So you can just open it up just like so. These are the controls that we're going to be using to basically track. So let's go into our viewer here and let's draw Draw, let's draw a little square on what surface we want to track. So in this case, I want to track onto the car. So let's do that. Now the mistake that a lot of people make with the planar tracker is it has to be a square. You don't have to make it a square to get the correct data set that you need to track an object onto a 3D plane. You don't. So I've done this random shape like this and what we're going to do is go into the top right and right next to where we see reference time we see this little set button. Click set. This basically creates the reference frame that the tracker is going to look at and go hmm that looks like that. It's similar. I'm going to move this so it's there. Very scientific explanation of what how this works. Really, I don't really know how it works. I just pretend to subscribe. So what we're gonna do is we wanna go over here, click track, and you'll see the magic unfold in front of your very eyes. Now, if you've been a numpty like me, you will see in your little timeline, which is just here, some markers that have been created. This is good. It's tracked, right? And if we move along the keyframes here, it's done a very good job, but it hasn't done anything there. That's because I started the tracker in the middle of the timeline. So just go into the inspector, click this way, and it will track backwards, which is what you want. So depending on what you want to actually track will depend on your next step here. Let's go over to the text, and I'm going to just track some text into this, which I think is the most common thing that someone's going to do. Or if it's a logo, you would put the loader node in and then find your relevant logo. But for now, we're doing text. So what we're going to do is click the output the text, go down to the planar tracker, and drag it on like that. It should automatically connect to the green triangle like that. Then what I'm going to do is click on the text, I'm going to just put down Vinci. Don't be alarmed at the fact that you just can't see anything. We're going to fix that. So click on the tracker, go over to operation mode here. You'll see it says track, it's a little drop down thing. Click the drop down and go to corner pin. And hey presto, you've got your text. It looks a bit wonky. We can also fix this. So go over into your preview and you'll see there's four points on this little corner pin square thing. And what we want to do is sort of match the perspective and line it up with the sort of surface area of what we're going to be working with. So as you can see, I've sort of matched the perspective. This is the front of the car, it's closer to the camera so it's bigger. Therefore, these two points are taller, like this. And then these two points, which are further away, are, you know, smaller. You just want to match it up, line it up. And if it's a wall, you just sort of line this up with the wall, with the brickwork. But in this case, I'm just sort of doing this by eye. And really, it comes down to what looks good and your personal preference, really. Then what we want to do is click on the text. We can go to the size in the inspector and increase this a bit. Look at that. We're done. I interrupt this video because it's sponsor time. Yes, I've had a new haircut. This video is very kindly sponsored by Epidemic Sound. Whether you're after a squeaky door sound effect, an engine, uh, someone falling over, a man collapsing, um, that beep noise that they have in hospitals or someone just breaking or I don't know the wind They will have it their catalogs massive epidemic sound is a brand that I'm very familiar with that I've used for years They're sort of a one-stop shop for your sound effects and music for your content I always like to go with brands that I'm familiar with everything is of extremely high quality And I have never ever had a problem with them. So when they reached out to me, it was a no-brainer Personally as a professional YouTube content creator and editor for various different projects being able to find sound effects of high quality and music as well quickly is of the 
the utmost importance. In the description, I'll leave links to certain deals that they have on offer, and you can sign up to a 30-day free trial with them. So if you want to try out these sound effects completely for free, you very much can. Go in the description and check them out. All right, back to the video. Whee. Now another great technique using the planar tracker is actually using the stabilization feature. You can use this tracking feature to basically enhance your gimbal shots and I use this a lot. I recently used this technique in my previous video in the actual montage. I recommend taking a look at that because I love that montage. It's just so cool. But yeah, let's jump into Fusion again on this clip and we'll, you know, make a start. So I have this shot of the car logo and it's nice, but this logo here, it doesn't stay central to the frame. So as you can see, we've got the center point here and it's just all over the place. Place, right it doesn't look that great we can enhance this so again search planar tracker and then obviously draw this little box around the subject that you want to stabilize to there you go i've got it now the important thing is in the inspector this time go to motion type go down to translation then click set you can now there we go bit wonky but It'll work. There we go. So once you've tracked this, you'll see all of these key points in the timeline like we did with the last tracker. Then what we want to do is go up to operation mode in the inspector on the planar tracker node. We want to click the down arrow and click stabilize. This will lock whatever the subject is in the center like that. Then all you need to do is quite literally create a transform node, put this after the tracker and just zoom it in a bit. That way it'll just get rid of the, you know, the, the corners that are a problem. They're a problem. It looks so much better than before. I'll put a before and after for this technique. You can apply this effect to faces for like this kind of comedic effect where you're like, I'm moving around. This makes it a lot more entertaining to watch. That's a very quick rundown of the planar tracker in Fusion. Now it's time for the point tracker. Now the point tracker has been recently updated in recent years and this is also located in the Fusion tab. So we're gonna stay in the Fusion tab and we're gonna use the exact same clip because why not? So what we wanna do is click on Media One, click Control Space, search tracker. This will generate our tracker. Just make sure it's in the node tree area. Then we want to go into our preview and you'll see it says IntelliTrack1. You can drag this over to your subject. So let's say I want it to track this point here, the little screw holder for the plate. Then we click track forwards and backwards. And then we wait. We wait and hydrate. Stay hydrated, kids. That has worked. As you can see, again, we've got the tracking data in our little timeline and we can zoom in and see the literal path that this tracker takes. Plus, if you want to edit this and delete, you know, tracking points where it may have just, you know, gone a bit crazy, you can go over into the spline and you can click the tracker here and you can actually see every individual keyframe that it's generated, you know, tracking the motion of this very important screw. If we want to attach text to this, it's very similar to the planar tracker. We want to click control space and, you know, search text. There we go, text plus, add that, lovely, put tracking. And you may panic because nothing's shown again, but all you need to do is click on the tracker, go up to the inspector, click operation, change operation from none to match move. And there you go, it'll appear. You can adjust this obviously by going into the text node, going into layout in the inspector and moving the center around. There you go. Now the negative to this is it doesn't have the 3D tracking aspect to it. So sometimes it can look a little bit less realistic, but if you want a simple tracking effect done very quickly, I'd recommend this. And now the final major tracking technique that I'm going to show you is in the color page. So let's jump into the color page and take a look at this. So I've got a clip of the car and I don't like this wheel. For tutorial purposes, it's wrong. So if you've got loads of nodes with your grades applied to it, let's just add another node and keep it all separate. We're going to keep all the tracking data in a separate node just so things don't get a little bit too messy. Then down here, you'll see these little buttons here. These are our tabs for this sort of section of the color page right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go down to tracker and this is our tracker window, but we'll come back to this in a moment because what we want to do is go over to this little window here this is our sort of masking window and what we're going to do is i'm going to put a circle mask but depending on what you want to track and make changes to you can use the pen tool or the line tool or the square there's various different things you can do but what i'm going to do is i'm going to use the circle tool because it's a circle and i'm going to just sort of drag it in place like this as you can see we've got some feathering going on that's fine you can adjust the feathering accordingly i'm going to bring it sort of quite you know i'm going to make it quite sharp and then what we're going to do once we've created this is go over over into our tracking window here. Now there's two different types of tracking mode. You can do frame where you're actually sort of key framing it yourself, or you can do clip and just track it the window and it will apply the data to the actual mask that you've got. So let's go over here. We're gonna click the track button right here. And as you can see, it's doing absolute bits. Quite literally, there's lots of bits all over the place, but like it, it is insanely good. So now we've got this mask that it's, it's like perfectly locked onto this steering, steering wheel. It's perfectly locked onto this wheel, losing my mind. And as you can see here in our node, we've got a little preview here. And if you want to see this in big, look at that. 
barely even lifted a finger. Brilliant. What you can do is, you know, make your changes. So if I want to brighten this up, maybe make it a bit more contrasty. Voila, you're good. And then what you can do also is add an alpha output, drag the alpha output of this node to the blue output of your node tree area, go back into the edit page, and now you've got a floating wheel. Easy. So that was the three main tracking techniques that you should know as an editor in DaVinci Resolve. What did you think? Is it rather impressive? I think DaVinci Resolve nails tracking altogether, really. If you did like this video and found it helpful, I love seeing the comments. I love discussing things with you. If you have video ideas or things that you want help with, you know, say in the comments, I do read them. If I don't get back to you, it doesn't mean I haven't seen it. But otherwise, I'll leave you be. My name's Dan. You've watched DaVinci. I'll see you later.